An important step in any church plant is really establishing itself as a globally interested missional church, meaning um, you are a global church and that you're participating in missions based on how Acts 1-8 kind of proclaims it to us, that, you know, it's kind of near you know, next phase over kind of regional and then far. And so how are we impacting our world right here in our community? How about adjacent to us and even to the outer ends of the earth? And so I want to give you just kind of five things to think about to help you establish your in your DNA and the foundation of your church plant becoming a global church. And the reality is I'm going to encourage you to start right away. Um, the first step in any church plant, really any church, is you need to be intentional with how you actually budget your money. Um, and so my encouragement is to you, don't just look at yourself from a missional standpoint going, everything's going to help us just um, to survive. The research actually shows that those that actually dedicate and tithe starting day one have a greater impact and grow to a greater size in a much less amount of time than churches that choose not to. And so a great kind of rule of thumb is just begin to tithe on everything that comes in the doors and set it aside for specific missional work. Some of that will be local. Some of that will be maybe in the community next to us or when it comes to our region. And some of that needs to be global to um, far unreached areas of the earth, reaching people that have not been um, enlightened to the fact of who Jesus is and what Jesus came to do. And so really quick, I would encourage you to just set aside 10% of everything that comes in. That is going towards missions efforts. The second step that will really benefit you in that process is learn to lean into the existing networks and resources that you already have. I know for us, we're part of the Converge family, and Converge is actively sending and working with um, global workers in around 31, 32 countries currently, and their entire focus is unengaged and unreached people groups. Um, that is exactly what we want to be a part of when it comes to how we can work with and help establish churches around the world. And so they already are servicing those areas of the world. They have their own processes to um, vet whether or not these candidates that are going to these locations are prepared, they're called, and uh, they have the gift mix to actually be successful in that. Um, that is good stewardship. That is, a, that is where we want to invest our time and our finances is into those type of people. And so you might sit there going, well, how do we find these people? How do we begin to support missionaries? Um, you want not just to support, well, Joe knows this person and they've supported him for a few years um, over, you know, from a personal standpoint. That may be the case. Vet them. Um, but if you are part of a current network of churches or a denomination, um, lean into the systems and the structures and the people that they've already invested in. That will just help you move further down the road faster. I know for us, when it comes to even international, um, we've kind of said there's a couple lanes that we're going to run in. Um, we're really interested in investing in church planting, and so we're looking to invest in church planting efforts and those that are actually being successful at that. The second is leadership development. Um, if it doesn't fall into one of those lanes, either leadership development or church planting, we're just not going to back it financially. And then even from a personal standpoint, for instance, in our church, we've just said we're not going to, our goal is not to see how many missionaries we can support, knowing maybe we're only supporting them at $10 a month, but boy, we got 5,000 missionaries that, that are part of our church. That's not our goal. Our goal is, we've just said, we want to be all in with just a few and support at a high level and be fully engaged. And so think through your overall philosophy. What works for us? What connects with our DNA? Um, what seems to connect with our value system, where we're going here locally at the church? Those are the things you want to invest in as missional opportunities as well. I want to encourage you to, number three, just talk about Acts 1-8 with the church on a regular basis. Talk about how you're actually invested, how you're involved. Um, broaden people's perspective of how big God is and how God is currently working, and that we have a great privilege to be able to partner with these incredible ministry opportunities all around the world. Um, and then after you talk about those things, actually take people to visit different places and people that you're engaged with. This is where short-term mission projects, whether, again, here in the States 
or in other places of the world really, really make a difference. And so um, find ways, if it's a week or two weeks or a month, or maybe you can create even a residency or internship program where maybe your college students can go for three months and experience what it means to live in a cross-cultural um, world, a cross-cultural experience. Um, build those kind of things, and your people will get more excited not only about what God is doing in those parts of the world, but even what they're doing, what God is doing locally in and through your church. And you'll find that your people are all in at a totally different level. And then lastly, you just want to take time on a regular basis to celebrate all the things that God is doing. Um, talk about what God is doing in places that are in war. Um, what you're hearing about the churches in those areas and how they're stepping up with a different level of courage to minister to those that uh, have, are, are wrestling with losing everything. Like those type of stories and praying for those type of churches, um, even if you don't have super personal connections, talk about what God is doing around the world. It will embolden your people and raise their courage level when it comes to sharing their faith and, and just their overall engagement with you as a local church. My, my biggest advice is simply this. You just need to be intentional about setting up the structures and the systems for you to become a global global church. And I can't wait to see and to hear the stories of what God is doing in and through your church around the world.